Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer. I took a long break, so I thought it'd be fun if I came back with two videos in one day. This is my second, and it's all about a super easy, time-saving way to do masking. Masking usually is very time-consuming because it often involves fussy cutting of masking paper, but this technique is super fast and easy to do. I have two cards for you that are very different but demonstrate this technique. Both of them use this new kit from Gina K Designs called Winter Whimsy. I like using Gina's kits because they're packed full of products and have a variety of styles in it so you can create a lot of different cards. There are two large 6x8 stamp sets, a 4x6 stamp set, lots of cardstock, many coordinating dies, and also that large intricate background die. So I'll be using two of the stamp sets, coordinating dies, and this background die in today's video. I'll be showing you how to use heat embossing to do masking. Now my second example shows heat embossing for a very traditional masked look. However, my first example shows how you can use clear heat embossing for masking when you're doing layering, layering of stamped images. It allows you to get crisp colors for the different layers and a very unique look. So this card uses the 4x6 stamp set included in that kit. You can see the different layered images there. You could just stamp these on top of each other and get kind of a blended look where the inks overlap. But by using heat embossing, you can keep the colors true for the different layers. Let me show you how. So I have my Misty stamping tool here and just some plain white cardstock. I usually start my stamp layering with the most solid large image first. This time I'm starting with one of the detailed layers first. So that's the one you see here. I will first use an anti-static powder tool over my cardstock because we'll be doing some heat embossing in a moment. You can stamp this image with whatever color or type of ink you prefer. I thought I'd use this beautiful celery color from Simon Says Stamp, and I double stamped it to make it a little bit darker. Now this color will stay true when we do layering, which is unusual. Usually the colors blend as you layer inks together. Now I wanted to have three flowers for my card, so I'm actually stamping four in case I mess one up. So I'll stamp one here, using my anti-static powder tool first. Then I will rotate my paper and stamp it again. So I did that on two pieces of cardstock, resulting in three flowers. Okay, now I'm gonna clean my stamp really well and then stamp the same image on top of the green that we've already done, but using Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink. So it'll make our green floral images a little bit sticky. That way we can add embossing powder in a moment. Now the reason I am clear embossing these images is so that when I come back with another of the floral layers and stamp on top, we don't get that blended look. Instead, the clear embossing will resist it and this green will stay bright green. So I'm stamping with Versamark ink on top of all of these flowers. Then I will add clear embossing powder. You could use whatever clear embossing powder you have on hand. It really doesn't matter. You'll heat set that, and that is pretty much trapping that green ink underneath. Anything we put on top of this will resist that ink. So this green will stay nice and green. Now there is another detailed layer image to add to this flower before we do the big image on top. This just creates little dots at the tip of our petals and in the center. So I'm lining it up with our heat embossed image, closing the door on my Misty to grab it, and now I'm stamping this with whatever color ink you want, whatever type of ink. This is Gina K Designs Wild Dandelion, which is a nice bright yellow. Now you'll notice that I double stamp my images. You do not need to do this, but I like to make them a little bit darker because oftentimes dye inks kind of fade a little bit after it dries, not much. And by double stamping it, it stays true to the color that you originally stamp. Okay, so now without moving the stamp, I'm inking it up again, this time with Versamark ink. So I'm putting that clear sticky ink on top of our yellow stamping that we've done. I then can again add that clear embossing powder and heat set it. So we have an image here that is green ink and yellow ink underneath clear embossing. So it's protected underneath that. Now I'm going back to the solid biggest image from this layered flower and I'm lining it up on top of our heat embossed images. This I want to stamp with any kind of dye ink. 
I'm using Gina K Turquoise C once again, and I'll stamp that right on top. Now when I stamp this, you'll see that some ink sits on top of the clear embossing that we did. I want to remove that ink, and if I wipe it with the cloth, it might smear. So I like to stamp it off onto a piece of copy paper or scrap paper. That's what you saw me do there. Now I'm going to repeat this so I get a more solid image. Ink it up with the dye ink, stamp on top, then take a piece of scrap paper and put it into the misty. I didn't ink up the stamp again and just press it again. When I do this step, it removes some of that excess ink off of the heat embossing. Then I can use a cloth to wipe away any more. Notice that that green and yellow stays bright with the blue around it. If we had not done clear embossing over the green and yellow, all of this would have layered together and you wouldn't have seen the bright green and yellow. This is a great way to do masking when you're using layered images. So let's do that again with another example here. So I'll ink up my stamp with the turquoise C. Any color ink will work. Dye ink is best for this. I'm inking it up and I'll stamp it over the clear embossing. You might need to give a little more muscle to this step because you're stamping over the texture of embossing. So I'm stamping this twice, then I bring in that scrap piece of paper, put it over it and just press it down again. So that removes some of the ink from the clear embossing. Then I can take a cloth to remove the rest. And look at how bright green and yellow that stays because we did the clear embossing to mask those colors. Such a cool look and so much better than fussy cutting each of those little pieces. Now I also have the center of the flower. I'll line that up. This time I'm using Hero Art's apricot ink. Any orange ink would work here. And I'll stamp that on top. And the little yellow dots will resist the ink thanks to the clear embossing we put over it. So if you have any type of layering stamp images and you want each layer to stay very true to the color they are, use clear heat embossing over each layer. That protects it and allows that color to stay the way it is. If you don't like the look of the clear embossing when you're done, you could do an iron off technique. I'll link to an iron off video up here on the top right, but I like the shine that it leaves behind. So there's the final look of our layered flower. All right, let's turn this into a card. I wanted this to stay simple in the background by doing white on white, but I did want some texture too. These are the new Gina K Designs cover plates. On the left is the new basket weave. In the middle is the one that's included in the kit. And on the right is the new heart cover plate from Gina K. Now I didn't use the heart cover plate, but I wanted to show it to you. And you can see these background dies are a little bit smaller than the background. So it makes a nice focal point. I used the basket weave cover plate and I die cut it twice from white cardstock. And I'm gluing those together for a little bit of dimension. You could skip the dimension and do one layer, but I really feel it adds a lot in the end. Let's get our sentiment die cut ready also. I'm using this Hello die set from the Gina K Designs Little Hello Stencil Bundle. I didn't use the shadow die, but it is included. I used the intricate Hello instead. I die cut it twice from white cardstock, and I'm using spray adhesive to glue the layers together. When it's super intricate like this, spray adhesive seems to be the fastest. I just take it outside and spray it into a box. So I use my fingers to press the two layers together. Once I'm happy with the placement, I like to put something heavy on top of it. And the trick I've been doing lately is to use my Misty pressure tool to press the layers together when I'm happy. This is the tool that I use to put pressure on my Misty stamping tool when I'm stamping. There are many versions of it out there. It's originally called the Chucky tool, which started in the Gina K Designs Facebook group. But this is a great tool with your Misty, but also to press your glued die cuts together. You'll see me do that a lot in this video. Now this layer here is black glossy cardstock that I die cut from Hello and I'm gluing that on top. I press it down and give it a bit of time to dry. Now real quick, I wanted to take a pause here. I mentioned Gina K's Facebook group. Gina K Design has the best Facebook group out there. She does a lot of lives there that are incredible for crafting. Well, Wednesday of this week, I will be a guest on her live video. So be sure to join us. I'll be a little bit nervous, but I'm just gonna help her do a bit of crafting. So please join us. Again, I'll have the link below. 
Okay, now back to the card. Notice that behind the basket weave die cutting on the back, there is a soft color cardstock that has some shimmer to it. It's kind of hard to see even the video, but in real life, it's beautiful. I use this Paper Rose Whisper White Shimmer cardstock. So this die cut here is two layers of regular white cardstock, and I'm gluing that onto the shimmer cardstock. So the shimmer will show through the openings. I wanted the background to be a lot of white with texture, and the shimmer just adds a little bit of interest. So I encourage you to look into specialty cardstocks like this. It really steps up a background, but isn't too distracting. I really wish that the video captured the shimmer. It's gorgeous in real life. Now this piece will get glued on to a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Now it's time to add our flowers. I wanted to mention behind them, and instead of using foam dots, I like to use additional layers of white cardstock. You'll notice the white cardstock I used for these layers were mess up stamped pieces. Those are the best ones to use for dimension. Nobody will ever see that stamping, and this will hold up much better when going through the mail. So I added two additional die cuts behind each of our stamped die cuts. And there you can see me using that pressure tool again. I'm using my Gina K Connect liquid adhesive to glue the three flowers right onto the front of our card. And then I will use the same adhesive to add our layered hello die cut right on top of that. The only thing I added in addition to this were some lemon gemstones. I wanted to keep this simple. We have a lot of texture and bright colors. Then we have the bold black sentiment. So I didn't want to add much else to it, keeping the background pretty subtle. So here is a look at the completed card. Again, you can see a few of those yellow gemstones. I added them in the background and also at the center of the flowers. If you look closely, you can see the shimmer showing through the basket weave die cut, but in real life, it is much more noticeable. And if you take a close look at the flowers, you can see how the layers are all very true to color. You have green, blue, and yellow. That's thanks to the masking that we did with the clear embossing that we put on our first two layers. If you've never tried this technique, I encourage you to do so. It gives a completely different look. All right, here is our next example. This is a more traditional masking technique, but instead of doing fussy cutting for a mask, we're using clear heat embossing. Now the stamp set I'm using for this is from the kit that I showed you earlier. I'll be using the row of houses, the row of trees, and one of the sentiments along the side. I will also be using the die that's included in the kit. Isn't this beautiful? I love how intricate it is. Now it looks beautiful on white cardstock, but I wanted a subtle tone on tone look. So I have two colors of cardstock that are close to each other. One is Gina K Tranquil Teal, and the other is Hero Arts Adriatic. They're just a little bit different, and when you glue them together, it creates a really neat look. So I'll trim the excess off the edge here, and then we have a little bit of a decorative piece that will go towards the bottom of our card. Now all we need to do is the stamping towards the top of the card. I'll be using the houses and trees that I showed you earlier. Let's start with the houses first. This is Lawn Fawn Kitty Pool Ink, which is a very soft pool color. Now I double stamped that to make it a bit darker, but I wanted to uh, make these houses look a little ombre. This is one of my favorite tricks for getting really cool looking solid stamped images. I'm using a Gina K blending brush and a darker Gina K Tranquil Teal ink. And I'm putting that ink just on the bottom of the stamp and then stamping it again. And notice how I do kind of a blending motion on my stamp like I would do on my cardstock. But all I'm doing is creating an ombre effect with our stamped images, making them darker on the bottom, fading to lighter at the top. Any solid images work for this. It's a great way to make those more solid, simple images stand out even more. All right, so there we have our little row of ombre houses. I will clean my stamp, and then on top of this, we're gonna stamp Versamark ink as we did before. We want to trap this ink under here so that we can stamp trees on top of it without it becoming kind of a overlapping mess. So I use my anti-static powder tool, and I'm stamping once again with Versamark ink. Now remember there are windows on these images that are white. So I want to protect that white area too. So I'm coloring in the white windows and doors with a Versamark pen. 
This VersaMarker pen is just like the ink pad. It's just a clear, sticky ink. So now when we add clear embossing powder on top of this, the houses will get clear embossing and the windows and doors will. So we'll be trapping the blue ombre look and the white windows and doors underneath it. I could have fussy cut each of those houses, but it would have taken a lot longer. And now we also have shine on the houses. Okay, now I'm taking the tree line image from the same stamp set that's included in the kit, and I have a piece of scrap paper ready to go for our masking technique. So now I'm inking up the trees with uh, Gina K Lucky Clover ink, which is a great true green color. I'm going to double stamp that just to make it a bit darker. Once I've done that, I will take the scrap paper and put it into the stamping tool and then press over it to remove some of the excess green ink that's sitting on top of the clear heat embossing. I then can take a dry cloth and wipe away any extra ink that's there. Okay, so now I'm going to move that stamp to a different location and stamp it again, repeating the process. So this shows you that you can do any type of masking with clear embossing. It's a big time saver. Now I wanted another layer of trees here, but I couldn't get my stamp just right in my stamping tool, so I'm flipping it over so I can get some more trees over to that area over on the left. So all of this is sta stamped with the same green ink. Now after I'm done, I made sure to wipe off all of our clear embossing, and you can see our house is standing out. But I wanted to make them stand out a bit more. Our trees aren't really solid, and they're all green. So I used a Copic marker, this is E44, which is brown, and just traced the trunk of the tree to add a little more color. Then I colored in the trees with YG06. Now I used Copic markers because that's what I have handy, and I just tried to avoid coloring on top of the clear embossing. If you use water-based markers, you wouldn't have to worry as much, and you could just wipe any excess ink off of the clear embossing because it will resist that. Now I'm trimming down our background to be four and a quarter inches wide. Now my cardstock I used for that was much too big, but that's because I wasn't sure where I was going with the design. But I decided to do that die cut piece along the bottom and glue this towards the top of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. So I'm putting glue along the top of the card and I'll glue this as high up as I can without cutting off any tree tops and I can just hold it up in the light to make sure I didn't cross that top crease. Then I will cut off the excess and we can glue our die cut piece to the bottom area. For a sentiment, I stamped with black ink the sentiment with love and prayers from the same stamp set onto a white cardstock strip. Then I glued that onto a black cardstock strip that was a little bit wider so there's a bit of a mat. I will glue my die cut piece to the bottom of our note card and then glue the strip right over where the houses meet this die cut piece. I like to do that where I have something going on at the top of the card and something going on in the bottom and cover up the seam with our sentiment. Now when I have holiday colors like this, like teals and greens, I love to add a little pop of red. So I found a tiny heart die cut in my craft room and I'm gluing that onto one of the houses. Many die sets have little extra dies like this that are great for accents. I also added glossy accents to the heart for a bit of shine. Now I wanted to make my houses stand out a bit more, so I came in with some darker green markers, that's YG09, and I'm kind of tracing our houses just to make it a bit darker around the lines of the house. It just makes it stand out better. You don't need to do this step, but I felt it kind of helped the final look. Now for a matching envelope, I used a Gina K turquoise C envelope along with the new Gina K Reasons for the Season stamp set. There are some beautiful sentiments in here, but I chose the Happy Holidays just to stamp along the flap of the envelope. I feel like having a matching envelope makes your card extra special. So here's a look at the final result. You can see the fun die cut layering in the bottom and then the masking that we did on the top with the houses and the trees. Didn't have to do any fussy cutting, and now our houses have that beautiful shine to them. If Again, if you don't want that shine on the houses, you can do an iron off technique, which I'll link to in that top video again. But this shine, I feel, makes the houses stand out even more from the trees in the background. Now, I hope these two cards demonstrate how easy it is to use heat embossing for masking, a big time saver.
However, before we go, I did want to mention last month I did a video using the Gina K kit. Now those stamp sets from that kit are now available individually. I know the poinsettia stamp set that I used on the card in the left was very popular and now you can get it separately. I wanted to mention that because I know a lot of people are asking and I will link to that below too. I will also link here to this video in case you want to check it out. Okay, I hope this masking technique is helpful to you. All the supplies are linked below if you want to check them out, but this is a technique that you can do with whatever supplies you have on hand. At the end here, I will link to a couple other videos that I mentioned throughout this one. I appreciate you spending this time with me. We'll see you again soon with another video. Have a wonderful week.